This is 48 and I've come to Morocco's Red City. It's a North African metropolis, Marrakech. This exotically chic town has been a tourist magnet since the kingdom's independence from France and Spain in 1956. On this 48, we go behind closed doors to get a glimpse of modern life for Marek Shoes. They say that things have changed. They have more freedom. And see how ancient magic still has a place in this Muslim society. We also cook with a chef who's challenging culinary tradition. Everybody asks the question, how they do that? And find out why karate is one of the country's most popular sports. Marrakesh soon became known as a gateway to the Sahara Desert where nomadic tribesmen came to buy, sell and have a good time. It's always been known as a city of migrants and not much has changed there because recently there are a lot more migrants coming from one particular direction. Where once they came for a holiday, many Europeans are now moving in. To find out why, I met up with a true local. <laughs> Welcome to Marrakech. Thank you. Like most Marrakech, student Larson belongs to the region's indigenous ethnic group, the Berbers. Yes, I am Berber, yeah. <laughs> Actually... Why uh, do you know? Because everybody asks me this question. Are you yeah. Berber? Are you, Arab? are you a Muslim? Are you an African? Well, I said, I'm all that. The Arabs brought Islam to the region in the 7th century and a way of life that's changed little in centuries. Now the post-colonial Europeans are bringing money. They have changed in Marrakech because they created a kind of uh, atmosphere for uh, creating uh, jobs and investments for, for young people to work. And at the same time, they, they, they have, uh, I can say, invaded the whole, the whole town. And demand for a special kind of property withstood the global slump. Shall I knock? It's a polite thing to do. We were meeting one of the very few Moroccan developers. Hello. Assalamu alaikum. Very sunny, beautiful. Oh, wow. And this is what it's all about. Morocco's traditional homes, the Riyads and Dams. It's one of the oldest houses here. These grand houses were built facing internal courtyards for a culture where the family is still central. Yeah. He said that here is used mainly for women to have some air and to wash their clothes and uh, yeah. housework. Long abandoned by Morocco's wealthy, one like this costs a million dollars. Riyadh prices have gone up tenfold in a decade, and many are now hotels. A lot of the Riyadhs have been done up by foreign investment. And you want Moroccans to be involved in this, don't you? Absolutely. Absolutely. He's afraid that in the future, the old town will be just for foreigners. This is a Riyadh, the American. Should I put my head in? Just, just knows it. This, this is. He doesn't like this one. I don't know why. It's a style and not style. So that is a question of style. He prefers mainly to to work with traditional, modest uh, materials. At his 50th development, Sissi. Yeah, this is Sissi. He showed us how he likes it done. There are no two houses which are the same. He says that uh, Riyadh's are like... Are like <laughs> Abdulatif, he's all excited, isn't yeah, he? I, I You've got that. all excited. <laughs> Abdulatif's vision is realised by local artisans. Polishing this lime wall takes two weeks to complete. Do you enjoy seeing your native art come back to life? So of course, he's, he's happy to, to take part in this operation of reviving this heritage. It also creates jobs for a country with 10% unemployment. It's beautiful. This is it. This is the final, the final step. 
So is this your paradise? Yeah, yeah, but he said that this is a paradise, but, but uh, he's, he's thinking about the final paradise. So, uh, Inshallah, on the day, on the day, on the day of judgment, yeah. Inshallah, Inshallah. 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 In
وريساتنا مترقين علينا اور دوترز ار مور انتليجنت اند اور دوترز ان لو ار ويتير And I was going to need my wits about me as Larson took me for a training session at his dojo. Oh. Black Belt Fatimazara is one of 75,000 Moroccans who practice karate. And mixed karate classes are a sign of change in this traditional society. Larson has a year's karate experience under his yellow belt. I had none. It was obvious I needed one-on-one -on -one tuition. Fatima Zara has been doing karate for 10 of her 23 years. It's really dangerous out there. No, 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 no. If you get used to it, it's like playing. It's not yeah. that dangerous. Are more girls doing karate these days? Can you sit with them? Yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, advised us to, 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 to practice sport and to, be, uh, to keep uh, healthy. Ouch. Karate fits in with the Muslim belief in discipline and focus. Left my hand. And Larson takes it very seriously. I step forward and I lift my feet and see. One, two, three. Right hand. And then sit back. Yeah. Oh. Stop. Oh, Come on, don't smile. Okay, I'm not Be serious. Trying. Come on. You should not smile when you're trying. Otherwise, you're not going to follow when the teacher is saying. Cold gaze. No, no, cold gaze? This is cold gaze. This is cold gaze. Yeah. Are we cold? Yeah. We're cold. <laughs> we left karate at not so high speed as Larson made final arrangements on the way. <laughs> to the main square, Jamal Fana, the heart and soul of Marrakesh for a typical boys' night out. So what are they doing there? Tasty. He's having a bit of trouble on that one. Abdul dived in. Good? Yes, very good. <laughs> the bigger it is, the better. See? Yeah. Come on, what do you say? Better good. A bit like muscles. Uh -huh. Spicy. Spicier. Yeah. Like 11% of Moroccans, Larson's friends are getting further education. You want to be a teacher? Yeah, that's me. You and might be a teacher. Yeah, next year, inshallah, God willing. But many graduates remain unemployed and risk joining the 15% of people living below the poverty line. Shukran. There's quite a bit of poverty, I noticed, in, in Marrakesh as well, well, like everywhere else. Wherever you go. Wherever you go, yeah. exactly. Despite the global recession, tourism remains crucial to tackling poverty. I just have one question. I mean, what's, what's, what's I mean, the first image that you have I mean, yeah, about Marrakesh? I guess deserts, uh, open to foreigners, uh, like yeah. cobras right there. In yeah. front of you. Food everywhere, spices. Shukran. Have a good time. To start the morning, Zineb was taking me shopping with one of Morocco's top chefs. You can find everything here. Vegetables, yeah. uh, fish, yeah. meat, spices, spices exactly. Oh. And we will go right now in the market, the last old market in Marrakesh. Yes. And this is the place where the locals come? Yeah, 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 for, for, for uh, Marrakesh's uh, people. But Mohar is no typical Marrakeshi. He's reinvented Moroccan food and cooked for royalty and Hollywood stars. Everybody asks the question, how they do that? It's really, really 
gravy is even <laughs> like a snow worrying. with colors. You're crazy, you know. He was going to teach me to make one of his favorite dishes. I love to touch. When you touch, you 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 control the quality. Fish. After he taught me to shop. Oh, oh. The taste. Mm. What are the main ones that you buy? Cuban paprika and saffron. I will show you the best paprika of the world. Red, really red paprika. We'd be making a tagine or slow cook stew, and I was about to meet the main ingredient. Okay, I will buy your chicken for you. My heart is still alive. Let me get this right. Chicken and he slaughters in front of you. Yes. <laughs> oh, wow. Come on. Okay, come on, come on. Wait, wait, wait. I don't know. Oh. Tom, 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 we don't have to see everything. It was so quick. That's, they are very quick. That's why the chicken don't suffer. Here's your chicken. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> oh, look at yeah. that. I love my head. Huh? Yeah, thank you. Dar Moha has become one of Morocco's top restaurants. Here we go. Thanks to this Swiss-trained chef's innovation, turning Morocco's traditional heavy dishes into nouvelle cuisine. Somebody say he's crazy. He's changing the, the Moroccan kitchen. That we, and we are traditional people. Be careful with your fingers. I know. Right. The traditional kitchen, I, I will not steal it or yeah. change it. He's just updating it with the help of an old friend. Do you remember our chicken that we buy? She was very cute. She had black cute and feathers. Uh, this one, we will prepare it of the tagine, traditional Moroccan. For in the Moroccan kitchen, you have to fill your aliment, you know? Persian and coriander. Garlic, white pepper, uh, uh, pepper. Uh -huh. ginger. That's ground ginger, yeah? And a little bit of saffron. Beautiful. Right now, we will put some lemon, onions, a little bit of water. I try to keep the same taste of the, the Moroccan kitchen, just less the ingredient. I put so water. much water and it's lazy. Come on, like, light, like, light. Light, yes. exactly. Yeah. One more, please. Okay. Oh, wow. The cavalry is hot. Mm. That's a miracle. Thank you. Did you learn something? Yeah. Yes. I learned to put water in my tajin. This one is ready for tonight. Next, we headed out of Marrakesh. Deep into the country. <laughs> But reality soon intruded as we were fined for our wing mirrors. Our destination, the Esawira region, where the unique argan tree grows. And a village that's keeping alive an ancient Berber tradition. Away from me. <laughs> What's that? And we were late for our guide, the mayor. May I say? They are the best cowboy boots I've ever seen. Like the Moroccan people say, please help yourself. My God. You can have them. This is a typical Moroccan Berber village. Yeah. The inhabitants of Morocco originally were Berber. As mayor of nearby Essaouira, Asma runs a tolerant city where hippies flocked in the 60s. So you are the first female mayor in all of Morocco. Yeah. You survived. But it's challenging. It's not surviving. It's challenging. It's surviving. But it's challenging, isn't it? Challenging. I love challenges. That's right. Yes, but why did you want to be a politician? I think, and I believe very much, we all have to help our country. We don't have any, uh, I would say, natural resources. What we do have, it's the human potential that Morocco has. Asma wanted me to see a co-op where women are fulfilling that potential. This is Imintlit, Argan Oil Cooperative. Salam alaikum. <laughs> For hundreds of years, the Berber women 
have been extracting argan oil by hand. Ask her how she manages not to hit her fingers. Give us some at the She knows how to avoid uh, breaking our sleeves. When private firms mechanized production, the Berbers lost nearly all their income from this unique oil that retails for up to $100 a litre. I hear it's good for wrinkles. Yes. Really? Yes, or it's really. I am sure. Whether you eat it or you just... No, no, just put it in the skin. In the, in the, in the skin. In the skin. Yeah. Wrinkles will it's, disappear. It's disappear. Wow. Look at your beauty. Your <laughs> Now they sell their argan products to shops around the world. So they've roasted those nuts to bring out the flavour, haven't they? And the co-op puts the women in control. Is it making family life easier? She said, she said, yeah, it yeah, she said that it helps. For example, when her girls need something, she can help her, she can give her some money. Women earning a wage is a huge change for a village like this. Yeah. What has it meant for, for the men of the community? He said it's okay, it's good. Yeah. Yeah, he said it's good for her, for her to work and to, to produce something That's and not to important. stay at home. And they're open minded. And to, just people. to consume. Uh -huh. Mentality's changed. This is what I really want to say. Years ago, he wouldn't allow them. A daughter or a, a, a wife, today she's got her own wages. I think women today in Morocco understood that she's got the same right as men. Zineb's daughter's birthday party awaited us in Marrakesh, but we couldn't leave before the women had said goodbye. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> and our sound man. Goodbye. <laughs> The party was in Marrakesh's new town. We had to hide in the kitchen because the music's so loud outside, so it goes again. I asked him to. <laughs> so tell me about Moroccan parties. People listen to loud music, yeah. forget about their daily lives for the sake of the moment, and that's yeah. all. Home parties are a big part of Moroccan social lives, as family and hospitality are deeply valued. How are you? We are here to share the happiness with Rima. Yes. Do you know Rima? Yes. Yes. She's so beautiful, isn't she? Yes. For Reem's seventh birthday, Zineb and husband Francois had invited their friends and family to celebrate with a feast of meat stew. <laughs> about to change with the arriving Ganawa van. Ganawa music was brought to Morocco in the 11th century by West African slaves. Its ancient rhythms are designed to induce a religious trance, but it's also a favorite for Marakshi parties. So we've come to the end of the night with our mint tea. Blasan, thank you very much. Thank you. I'm so, I'm so glad that I, I had the experience with you. It was wonderful. So thank you so much. And thank you, you Zineb. madam, our Zineb, you, our Zineb. crazy Zineb. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Amanda. Uh, this well, is it. So, it is, isn't uh, it? I'm going to see you on the dance floor in two minutes. No. So finish no your way. Tea. No way.